Hi, welcome back. I hope this finds you well. In this video, I want to continue with my Games Narcissist Play series. And today, I'm going to talk about the ways that narcissists and toxic individuals play Fear Factor. As you know, Fear Factor was a popular TV show uh, about a decade or so ago with Joe Rogan as host. And the contestants would have to, you know, face their some of their greatest fears by, um, you know, being submerged underwater in a in a box or eating a spider, um, and you know, just stuff that would just make you cringe. Anyway, narcissists oftentimes use fear as a weapon to keep their targets in line, and oftentimes they they are actually more fearful of you than you are of them but they use they use this as a tactic to keep you in line to keep you uh, giving up that supply uh, to keep you close to them and relying on them and uh, lead you to believe that something bad's going to happen if you're not with them or if you're not dealing with them or working with them or in a relationship with them so they use fear as a weapon in that way so here are some of the specific ways that i thought of that narcissists can play fear factor with you number one fomo or fear of missing out this also is is known this is also known as future faking so a lot of times narcissists will dangle carrots in front of you whether it's an opportunity or an object or something to keep you on the hook while they continue to take supply from you i remember when i was a teenager my dad would had drove me by this auto lot and basically they did auto repair and they did they also restored vehicles and there they had a beautiful Carmen Ghia for sale and a beautiful uh, Volkswagen Beetle and my dad at the time had been teaching me to drive and he would he drove me by the lot on a couple of occasions actually and said you know we're gonna get you that we're gonna get you this car when you turn 16 and it, I think it was the Carmen Ghia and he's like you know we're gonna get you that car it's beautiful I looked at it we're gonna get you that well 16 came and went and I wasn't remotely close to having a car and I carpooled with some classmates of mine or if I was lucky and my mom was off from teaching school I could borrow her car or I could borrow my maternal grandmother's car but other than that no Carmen Ghia no Beetle no nothing and really it wasn't so much for me even as a kid my thing wasn't so much oh I have to have this because I'm the spoiled brat but it was more like hey I'd rather you not say anything to me at all than to dangle this in front of my face and lead me to believe that I was going to get this because I'd rather not be disappointed and you know for me it was really tough in a way because I uh, commuted to a private school out in the county where most of my classmates came from very wealthy families and I did not and all of them well I, I won't say all of them but most of them got cars when they turned 16 and so to be kind of the odd guy out in an environment like that where everybody's getting the keys to a lot of them got brand new cars um, or they got handed something that their parents already had and again it wasn't even so much that oh my gosh you know I'm gonna die if I don't have a car but it was the idea that he had talked it up so much and then you know when the time came when I turned 16 and there was this window of time for me to be able to have have a car and drive it to and from school into my sports and practices and games and all that nothing and he never brought it up again after dangling it in front of my face so anyway just thought I'd share that number two catastrophes oftentimes narcissists will use catastrophic uh, things or will make up catastrophic events to put fear in us and to keep us in line and a great example of that for me was when I was in Los Angeles to help uh, the alleged murderer 
uh, work on his fitness video. He, on the phone, he claimed that all of LA was on fire and everything was crazy and the locations kept having to change and move because of these fires. And I'm sitting here in LA in a hotel going, there's no fires here. <laughs> Number three, narcissists will say things to kill your excitement about something. like they'll uh, drop some bad news on you to kind of, oh no. Number four, narcissists will oftentimes portray themselves as tougher or more, as tougher than they actually are in order to keep you in line so that they can continue to get supply from you. A lot of times they're very fearful and very insecure, very intimidated even by you but the idea is to give you the illusion that they're they're tough and that they're, you know, that something bad might happen to you if you're not aligned with them or if you're not with them. Number five, they'll often portray other people as incompetent or dangerous or uh, sketchy or things like that to keep you from talking to that person or approaching that person or maybe even comparing notes with that person about the narcissistic individual. These are some of the ways that I thought of that narcissists can play fear factor and maybe you can think of some more. Comment below with yours and I look forward to reading them and know that you're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.